The last of the polls have closed in the state of Indiana, and the results are coming in. The Associated Press projects Republican Donald Trump will defeat Ted Cruz. John Kasich had stopped campaigning in the state in a deal he had cut with Cruz. There's no projection yet in the Democratic race between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. All of this after a day when tensions boiled over on the Republican side. John Yang reports. This man is a pathological liar. Ted Cruz in Indiana this morning unleashing a blistering attack on Donald Trump. The Republican frontrunner cited an unsubstantiated National Enquirer report that linked Cruz's father, Rafael, to the man who killed President John F. Kennedy. His father was with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald's being... Uh, you know, shot, and nobody even brings it up. I mean, they don't even talk about that. Trump also chided Cruz over a confrontation with the New York businessman supporters. Well, they know he's lying. They've been watching him lie. He tell, that's what he does. That's why we call him Lion Ted. Hours later, Cruz branded Trump utterly amoral and compared him That's to a character in the Back to the Future movies. A caricature of a braggadocious, arrogant buffoon who builds giant casinos with giant pictures of him everywhere he looks. We are looking, potentially, at the Biff Tannen presence. This very personal war of words went white hot, even as Indiana voters were going to the polls. And while Trump was trading barbs with Cruz, he was taking fire on another front from Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton. She was interviewed on MSNBC. He has given no indication that he understands the gravity of the responsibilities that go with being commander in chief. And that will be a big part of my campaign. Clinton spent the day in West Virginia and Ohio, but Democratic rival Bernie Sanders made a last ditch push in Indiana. These trade agreements, whether it's NAFTA, or permanent normal trade relations with China were a disaster for American workers. I understood that. I fought them. I was out on picket lines with workers in opposition to NAFTA. Secretary Clinton, as you know, has supported virtually every one of these disastrous trade agreements. After today, the primary season moves into the home stretch, heading toward the final big day on June 7th and the biggest delegate prize, California. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang. Now back to today's presidential primaries in Indiana. As we reported, Donald Trump is the projected winner on the Republican side. At the moment, the Democratic race too early to call. We're joined now by Margaret Taleb. She is a White House and politics correspondent for Bloomberg News. And welcome back to the program, Margaret. Thank you, Judy. So big win apparently for Donald Trump. The fact that all the news organizations were able to call it as soon as the polls closed based on, based on exit polls. What do you see in those exit polls that explain what he did here. You know, Indiana, by sort of traditional measurements, a very conservative state, the evangelical vote's important, but this year all bets are off. Donald Trump has been a movement on the East Coast, in the middle of the country, and now we move west, right? And the economy and government, anti-government sentiment, a huge rallying cry for Republicans this year. We see him harnessing that and continuing to take advantage of it. And it is, if not the death knell for Cruz and Kasich, awfully close to it. Well, Ted Cruz had practically lived in the state of Indiana, had made multiple campaign stops there over the last few days, threw everything he had into it. What does this say about his campaign then? That he could not overcome the, the wave for, for Donald Trump. I mean, essentially, you know, this was a place where he should have naturally played strong. He had even uh, the, the running mate, you know, sort of to help him and to offset some of the woman problems potentially that Donald Trump had. None of that seems to be working in his favor based on what we know as of right now tonight. So does that mean Donald Trump is the only one of these Republican candidates who can get the number of delegates to be the nominee of the party? Mathematically, it's difficult to see Ted Cruz being able to catch up. It's probably impossible. But the question is, will Donald Trump secure enough before the convention, right? So California has always been the last stand. There's New Jersey, too. There's now about a month left for the sort of either the last gasps of these campaigns or at least some new reconstruction of a Never Trump campaign. And if not, then he goes into the convention either with that number or very difficult to stop. Nobody else obvious 
you know, in position to stop him. Well, let's turn quickly to the Democrats. As we said, the results uh, are still not sufficient to be able to call this on the part of news organizations. That doesn't suggest good news for Hillary Clinton, does it? No, it doesn't. And her campaign for uh, some days now has been preparing for the possibility that she will lose the state. But it's really a different contest still on the Democratic side than it has been on the Republican. This is not sort of a, a decisive state. I mean, if Bernie Sanders were to obliterate her in Indiana and in West Virginia and in some contests going forward, uh, there's potentially some possibility for him to live another day. But the statements that he's made about taking this fight all the way into the convention are just not supported by the numbers in the same way. Not supported by the numbers, but if Bernie Sanders were to win Indiana, this is wind in his sails, at least for the next few weeks of these primary contests. Sure, and, and he's made clear that he intends to go forward, and he, you know, there's been some evidence of uh, some waning momentum for him, the possibility of some problems with fundraising going forward. This could help him. But uh, getting the help to continue your campaign is different than having the momentum and the numbers to secure the nomination. And really, that's the difference in what we're talking about at this point. Even a loss tonight in Indiana does not uh, change the game in terms of Hillary Clinton's position. So for the Democrats, Margaret, just quickly, this means that uh, Bernie Sanders continues to campaign. Hillary Clinton certainly continues, but she focuses much more on Donald Trump. Now. Yes, and her challenge is still to some degree how to bring Bernie's supporters along, Bernie Sanders' supporters along, but increasingly she turns to the general election. Margaret Talev with Bloomberg News. We thank you. Thank you. And you can follow the results from Indiana on our website. Plus, you can find a profile of one of Pennsylvania's delegates who will be casting a critical vote at the GOP convention in Cleveland. It is the first in our series profiling Republican and Democratic delegates. You can read all that on our homepage, pbs.org slash newshour. And again, the results from today's Indiana presidential primaries. The Associated Press projects Donald Trump will easily win the Republican contest, putting him just about 200 delegates away from clinching the nomination. But Democrats Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are still in a close race with no projection yet.